All right, we're gonna talk a little bit with our model today. This is Sean McCarthy. I know I just said your name, but tell me more about who you are. Well, I am Sean McCarthy. Um, I am a musician, a songwriter, uh, a visual artist, um, a, an aspiring uh, fashion designer by the teachings of Michelle here. Um, and, uh, and I love style, I love styling uh, clothes and yeah. So are there any uh, specific uh, music or art projects you want to highlight or specifically shout out? Yeah, so um, my artist name um, outside of my, my personal identity of Sean McCarthy is Joan Darwin. That's the name that I released my visual art under and am actually currently working on a debut solo record that will be released under the name Joan Darwin. Um, I am also the drummer of a group called Moonwalker and the drummer of a group called The Midnight Club. And what are you wearing today? Tell us about your entire look and I know we had, this is our second look today, so tell us about this whole look and then tell us about the earlier look. Okay, uh, today uh, I'm wearing Michelle's Hollis Corduroys in Wonder Wheat. Um, with this um, this white button-up shirt. I don't know the brand, unfortunately. I only thrifted it's, it's it. Vintage. Shirt. It is vintage. Yes, yes it is vintage. Um, um, I am wearing these sunglasses sold at Michelle's store. Space Actually, you know Dust. what? You got the last pair. We don't have them anymore. They're not sold at the store anymore, but uh, <laughs> you can find them on my face and Michelle's too. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, this tie was actually a gift from a good friend of mine um, named Tori. Uh, I, she gave it to me and I was like, wow, what a phenomenal tie. And today I was styling this outfit and I was like, wow, this tie is perfect. And uh, so I'm very excited all, about it. Brings in all the colors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then this, this trench coat is actually um, my, my grandfather's trench coat. Um, who passed away a long time ago, but uh, I was gifted it and I love it. And your shoes too. Oh yes, my shoes here are, these I, actually a friend of mine thrifted these and then gave them to another friend of mine and then that friend of mine <laughs> gave them to me. And so wow. it's like the, it's like the, the brotherhood, uh, of, the the brotherhood traveling of the traveling shoes. shoes. Yeah, exactly. I never saw that movie, but I, I get it, I understand. It. Now I get it. Yep. Yeah, these shoes hold <laughs> secrets. Um, so what grew, what drew you to, um, oh wait, you were wearing earlier, sorry, earlier oh, right. you were wearing the Hollis Corduroy's in Eclipse. Eclipse. Um, yes, they're like a, a, a black, and gray um, alternating kind of pattern. And uh, on top I was wearing a, a black mock neck with a black um, like scarf neckerchief type thing. Um, a vintage leather jacket from the 90s um, that was actually gifted to me by my mother, which is very nice. Um, and though I can't, don't think you can see them in any of the photos, on the back is a a triangular shape of three circles that me and Michelle conceptualized <laughs> together and then she put onto the back of the jacket which is a, uh, a symbol that has come that has come to represent um, like to me um, existence in general um, and the shoes I was wearing were these big chunky uh, ASOS boots um, that I that I like quite a bit and then I was wearing a pair of black leather gloves um, that I don't know the brand of, unfortunately. Um, and uh, was wearing a pair of Saint Laurent um, glasses that are clear, and I adore them. So what drew you to um, the Hollis Corduroys? Clearly you have you have two pairs. Yes. You own these pants. So. Many, many things drew me to the Hollis Corduroys, yeah. in fact. Um, the first of which was the shape of them. I love Michelle it kind of has this wonderful style in a lot of her pants of being high-waisted and, and form-fitting around the waist and going out into a somewhat triangular shape. <laughs> um, and I, I think that they're just flattering to the human body and a cool silhouette. Um, and then with the circles on all like on the knees and on like the butt of the pants. Um, that drew me in. I am I'm a big fan of circles and triangles. <laughs> um, and 
you know, um, so, and I think Michelle is as well. Mm -hmm. And so seeing them on her pants, I was always like, whoa, circles on pants. And, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, so that drew me in. And then um, I'm trying to remember which pair. Did I have the Eclipse first? I think you had this one first. This one you first. You had this one first because I did not have the black fabric yet, I think. Right, right. And then when I had that, you were yes. like, I, I, need a pe oh. I need a pair of these too. Yeah, so like yes. these pants are are amazing because they've got all different colored circles. <laughs> Those have These have almost every other color of the corduroy yeah. that I found that I made these pants yeah. with. Yeah. And then the, the Eclipse ones are black on this side, down the pant, gray on this side, down the pant, and then and mm -hmm. alternate like uh, the the different color like the opposite yeah, colored like circles a jester thing yeah like a jester thing kind of like thing. almost like a yin yang thing in a way yeah. too yeah it's, that's kind of why well yeah I always go on long journeys when I name things yeah so it's like Hollis Hollis took a while to figure out that name it's and a good name thanks yeah I don't even uh, know how to explain it but it's like holographic or ho like ho holistic like oh great yeah so things that combine together to make a Hole. That's a great idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those uh, that really drew me in, and then also just the the material that she chose for them, the the corduroy material is just so soft. It's it's a really really comfortable material. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's what drew me to them. <laughs> How would you describe your personal style overall? Overall, well, I uh, I would like to I kind of blend between. You know, I'd almost like to say the the different kind of styles that I've, in a way, meshed together. Juxtaposition. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, so but almost more of a more of just like fun. a puzzle. You know. Okay. Um, yeah, but um, so I really take influence from like the the space age era of the '60s um, and slash just mod from the '60s, um, and then I kind of mix that in with glam from the '70s. Um, and then I mix that in with a bit of kind of industrial-ish from like the 90s and then um, um, and then n on neither of the outfits today but quite often I love wearing things with embroidered flowers on them because I'm just I love nature and so I love having flowers on my body so for you do you feel like your your style your personal style and your art kind of intersect in some ways or? yeah i think that they um intersect in pretty much every way uh in fact i kind of think that art is only style it's i think it's everything that you choose i think that in life pretty much and this is kind of in line with a, a thing i've heard brian eno talk about quite a bit but where that Pretty much the only things that we don't really have necessarily a choice over in our lives is our like animalistic needs. And other than that, everything is a choice that we're making constantly. And so by making that choice and choosing what you have in your life that is representative of style, and I think it is inherently art. And I think that like, um, you know, in that way, our life can kind of become art by bringing into your life more things that represent you. Mm -hmm. you just know? by simple decisions, even even or even the simplest decisions. Yeah, like, like Brian Eno talks about the screwdriver, how the handle of a screwdriver is an artistic choice because when you go to the store, yeah. there are many options and you have to choose one, and that therefore is a stylistic choice. And, and so choice. there's like there's like honor in that. There's like there's pride in that. Even yeah, if you're, and if you're a lowly screwdriver handled designer, yeah, and you then, don't have to feel bad about your life. Right, you and just as get to decide that exactly, and yeah. as a lowly <laughs> screwdriver purchaser, <laughs> yes. you get to find a screwdriver that represents you yes you know and, that's great uh, yeah and so I do think that I, I, I think that for everyone this is the case but definitely for myself I can speak um, that I think my style and my art go hand in hand because I think that they are one and the same yeah one represents the other yeah yeah do you uh, you mentioned Brian Eno I don't know I don't know about like Brian Eno did he was he stylish <laughs> he was certainly he was certainly stylish when he was part of Roxy Music. When, yeah. he, when he was in the in oh, the band right. Roxy Music, <laughs> he wore some quite eccentric outfits. Yeah. Um, so would you say would you say that Brian Eno is one of your style icons? I would say somewhat. I would say that like the glam thing is a style I uh, icon for me. You know, I think the best representative of that was Bowie, and followed by like Mark Boland. You know, mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, I, I would say that those two are more so influences on me than Brian Eno. Uh, Brian Eno's philosophy inspires me more than right. anything, but um, but his his style in that period certainly um, influences me. And then his clothing style changed after that. You know, he didn't really express clo in, through clothing as much, but his his artistic choices continue to. Uh, uh, inspire me more than like almost anyone's artistic choices yeah yeah okay cool so so okay do you remember the first time you came to space dust and what brought you in <laughs> i do re i do remember the first time i came to space dust um and i do remember what brought me in um so my band at the time um the midnight club we were we were far more active back then um we were playing a show at the Echo, just down the street from Space Dust, and we were like, we had we had loaded in, um, and so we were just killing some time, and we had just moved to Los Angeles, like we had like like we had lived there, I don't like maybe a few months, maybe maybe less, um, and we were we decided to walk around and see what was in the area, and so we walked down the street and. You know, we're all massive like like Bowie fans and and fans of glam, and so we're like walking past your store, and we saw like Bowie T-shirts, and we're like, well, we gotta check this place out. And then, if I remember correctly, you were listening to ELO. I think that day we were listening to Daft Punk. Oh, okay. Yeah, right but we on. made we didn't even like we made everyone dance. I think. We oh saw, yeah, we you're saw totally your right. group, like the whole band and like other people, friends and stuff walking in. And we were like, everyone has to dance. And we all danced. Yeah, I that was yeah. really good. We yeah. were like, this is just a new rule. We were in a great mood and <laughs> just like, you know, it was just like this it just has to be said. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone has to dance. Yeah, yeah, and so <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, and so then we continued to look around, and there was just lots of cool stuff in there like you know you, with your designs and then also just with the things that you were selling were quite in line with the things that we're interested in and and so we started talking to you and you seemed real cool and you, we found out that you're a musician and so we're like whoa that's so cool and, and yeah so that is and then that. and we went to your show yeah and then you went great. to my show yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it was a it was a good time awesome so um i guess what's like do you is there a thing that you love about space dust most that you didn't just mention the thing, I mean, the thing that I love the most about Space Dust is certainly your clothing designs. Yeah, with, without a doubt. I, I, you know, I think that you have unique ideas um, and create articles of clothing that people who like to express themselves through, through clothing can, you know, they can utilize like well because it's very unique and very expressive clothing. You know. Um, and so, yeah, that is my favorite thing about Space Dust. Awesome. Yeah. Um, do you feel it's important to shop local, and why? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's actually one of the most important things you can do as a person in capitalism is um, shop local because I, you know, I think that the less there has to go into buying things, whether that be, you know, labor or 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 like, you know, gasoline for delivery or, you know, um, or gasoline for driving there or, you know, anything that goes into a product being sold. I think that if we can eliminate as many of the, the steps in between as possible, um, I think that's a good thing, you know, so I think that buying local is good for so many reasons. A, that it positively benefits your community. If you're living in an area, the people around you are your community, whether you like it or not. And um, so to support those people goes very far. Um, also, you can build unique friendships and relationships such as like you and I, you know, we've become really good friends since finding your store and um, can't get that on the internet you can't get that on the internet <laughs> um, oh, maybe you could. I guess you could. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's different um, and uh, yeah and then also you know I think local local brands tend to do things more handmade um, which I think is also incredibly important to right. be you know not exploiting the labor of humans you know but to you know actually make sure that the, the work that went into the things that you're buying was like good, you know? Yeah. yeah, and it's actually kind of the fastest fashion. I mean, in a way, it's like we don't make things fast because we're we're humans making them. Right. Not um, machines. We're right. not machines. Um, but it's like if uh, if we didn't have your size on the rack and we still had enough fabric to make you your size, 
you we could it. make it the next day. Right. And that's that's pretty fast. Yeah. Nonetheless, it's far more <laughs> unique, you know, than yeah. buying things from big corporations. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Do you have a particular like affinity for Echo Park where we're based? Mm. Yeah. You know, Echo Park was one of the first areas of LA that I felt actually like connected to. I, when I moved here, I moved to the Hollywood area and it felt just so like, you know, kind of just like unwelcoming and like not so just too, you know, I don't know, too, too crazy for, for my liking. And so in finding Echo Park, alongside a few other neighborhoods within LA. Um, you know, these were these places where I was like, whoa, there's like really cool stores in like Echo Park specifically. I found your store, you know, at the time I think it's closed now, but like Nico and Bullet was there yeah. and uh, Big Bud Press is over there. And it's like, and there's just a lot of good food over there. And um, the park itself is, you know, beautiful and, and nice to go to. And so I think it's just a, it's a lively area that is, not overwhelming but very fun and with great culture and great people and yeah so I, yeah. I definitely enjoy Echo Park quite awesome. a bit. Awesome. Do you have a favorite place or like an environment in LA or in or around LA that you like to create in mm -hmm. or like go for inspiration maybe? Yeah okay um, well I, I like to generally create in my home overall I think that there's a, it's a safe space it gives me you know it's nice um, however when I'm if I'm writing poetry or 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 words to a song or something like that, the things that tend to inspire me the most are nature and people. And so, um, you know, I like to sit in Griffith Park quite a bit um, and look at all of the trees and um, and listen to what they have to tell me mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and you know watch the people and, and all that. And then I love sitting at coffee shops and just listening to the conversations around me and and watching the people behave and, and do different things um, yeah so with I, your sunglasses on with my sunglasses on so yeah. they can't tell you're looking yeah or even if or sometimes I don't mind if they know yeah. that I'm looking actually <laughs> Good. yeah yeah um, let's it, be direct about it you know I think that <laughs> as people we are observers and we should stop shaming observing right right don't I mean feel weird not that creepy looking observing at you. maybe but you know but uh, you know what I mean right so between um, between okay between listening to the trees and um, or like engaging with the trees yes. and uh, um, making the making the distance between uh, like a product and a consumer less. Yes, right. <laughs> um, what else What else can you think about that that you are passionate about wanting to change in the world and what do you think? That, how do you think we can do that? Yeah, um, you know, uh, I think. It's hard for me to say for the world. I think for the world, I would like for more people to welcome peace into their life. Um, as for America specifically, I would really like to see um, doing art for art's sake to become something that can be supported um, financially. You know, I think that a lot of the problem with art in America right now is that in order to do it, and be able to survive, you, you you know, you don't always get to just make art for art's it sake. It feels like it has to be a business or profitable in some way, right? Right, right. Yeah. And, um, and I think that creating art is one of the most absolutely beneficial things that we can do as humans. And I think that it's something that creates almost no danger at all and causes no issues really. And so I think that if we can find a way to enable people to be able to just do that if they want to, yeah. I think that that is something that I feel deeply passionate Enable about. Enable and encourage, yeah. maybe try to get rid of some of these like, yeah. things that we've grown up with where we feel like we, like 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 we said, have to make a business out of something in order for it to be worthwhile. Right. That, like we, I think a lot of times as, as adults we feel like we can't create just for the sake of creating. Exactly. But like when we're children, it's like the most innate thing we do. Yeah. And so we only lose that over time, but it's never, you know, <laughs> but I don't think that we actually lose it. We just ignore it. You yeah. Know? Kind of stifle it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so, you know, I think that a step towards that would be, you know, introducing some sort of, uh, you know, basic just income, you know, that we don't necessarily right. have to like constantly be struggling to make enough money to survive. Um, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Um, I also think that there are countries across the world who are far more giving about artist grants, you know, and I think that that is something that 
um, America should really look into doing, especially Los Angeles and New York, considering their entire economies are based <laughs> off of creative fields. Right. The fact that the government isn't giving out more grants towards those things seems counterintuitive <laughs> to me. Yeah. So, encouraging people to create more, enabling them yeah. with financial resources to do so. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a good dream. Yeah. Good, or is a good dream for a amazing vision. Vision for the future. I can't talk. <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Or do you have any questions for me? Do I have any questions for you? Um, <laughs> Are you are you thinking of new clothing ideas? Oh, I'm working on them. More circles. Good. Yeah, they're Good. happening. More they're, circles. Yeah, Great. yeah. It's more circles always. Wonderful. Um, I yeah. If I can stop, it's a perpetual circle machine. That's great. Going in never, circles. Never stop the circles. Creating circles. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Cool. Yeah. Interact with the trees, people. Interact with the trees, people. Be Just one with the trees. Take a look at the trees. They're, they're trying to teach you something. <laughs>